And tonight we're hearing from one Blacksburg organization that was in the process of bringing a Syrian refugee family to the United States when that executive order, order hit. The Blacksburg Refugee Partnership says it's not giving up hope that this family of seven currently living in a refugee camp overseas can find refuge in Southwest Virginia. WSL's 10 Rob Manch spoke with the partnership members today. Now, Rob, how did this organization get started? Well, Bree, this is an amazingly motivated group of individuals that simply saw an international problem and wanted to do something to help. The partnership has been working through the Commonwealth Catholic Charities and has already resettled one family in Blacksburg. Now, members say they have more support than ever. Scott Bailey says the Blacksburg Refugee Partnership was born out of people seeing the refugee crisis on the news. It started here at Clay Church with just a few of us getting together saying this, this problem is too big, we need to do something. The first meeting was held at the Blacksburg Library in mid-July. We thought we'd call it a success if we could get 40 people there and we set out 40 chairs. That room had minimum 80 people. You couldn't have fit another human being in there. Then, at the end of that month, the day finally came when a family of eight arrived in Blacksburg. When you meet the family, and it's kids, and it's a real face, and they, they give you hugs, and they smile, and some of these kids have personalities. It's just unbelievable. We found a place for them. We had all kinds of furnishings, furniture, lamps, beds, all donated. They're all in school. They're all getting educated. The school system here is phenomenal. The teachers take a great interest in the students. The process worked so well, and the group had so much community support, they tried to house a second family. We had a date that they were supposed to come. That date was this past Thursday. But then, uh, as everybody knows, uh, the executive orders hit, and that prohibited the family from coming, so they never boarded the plane. Partnership member Jan Mathis says the executive order has caused their membership to skyrocket to over 300 members. It's been a definite growth at that time, you know, a jump. Maybe I could say double. You know, if there used to be five a day, now it's ten who request to be on our mailing list. But for the family of seven, still in a Jordanian refugee camp, there's a time concern. They go through 18 to two months to two years of um, interviews, background checks, medical health checkups, and all those things have have dates on them of when they were completed. So. If this family doesn't make it to the United States now, all of those uh, check checklists will, you know, have to be done over again. That's why Bailey says despite the executive order, he's not giving up. Somewhere papers were created for that family that allowed them to travel. Those papers are sitting on someone's desk. And until we know they've been torn up, we think there's still hope. Well, the group tells me even if they can't bring that family over right now, they're determined to help other refugee families that are currently here in the United States. The partnership has set up a website and even a GoFundMe page for donations. We'll have links to those on our website at WSLS.com. In studio, Rob Manch, WSLS 10.